Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Blazor website tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up dependency injection. That's the way that you can get data to your web pages. So for example, if you need to load something up from the database, you need to actually have like a connection to the database, whether that's via an API call or just via directly accessing the database. It completely depends on whether you've got a server or a client based application. We're using Blazor server right now because WebAssembly isn't out until I think May next year. Maybe then I'll show you how to switch over to it when we switch over to it too for our own website. But yeah, we're going to just have some fake data right now and we're going to inject it into our pages and load that up. So let's get into it. But of course, first, I've got to thank my patrons with special thanks to Some Hobo 101, Flow State Games, Average Morning, Luke Latham, Hady, Rene, Evgeny, Art Farrell, Buddha Ray and Remy Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to my patrons down below. If not, there are also links down below to social media such as Twitch, Twitter and Discord. If you could help me out by following on any of those, it'd be greatly appreciated. Now let's get to the video. Okay, so so far our website is just a homepage with hello world, counter where we can increment the counter. This is actually kind of related to what we're doing this video, which is loading up some data, though this data is also um, not real. It's not from a database. This is just using a service, but the way we're going to do it, we're going to be creating our own service rather than using the built in one. And then in a future video, we can actually use a real database with real data and add to it dynamically. But uh, we also have a slash ex a routing, routing example and then just a number. And then we have the actual page display that number from the URL and then we can actually increment and go to those pages. So that was the example I showed last time. So now we're going to build a new page and we're actually going to, when we go to that page, um, based on the ID, load up a different element from the list to put on the page, which will um, replicate, you know, how a, or simulate, sorry, how a database would work, which would be you'd put the ID of the item from the database and then you'd load that into the page. So let's get to the code right now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to have to do is create a model. So the model is essentially the uh, template of data. It has no logic in it, even though it technically can, like this has some logic here to calculate Fahrenheit. So it only has to store Celsius. And then if you want Fahrenheit, it can convert it. But usually you'd have your database model like this. For example, you might have a database model for a uh, person and the person would have a name and an age and so on. And you put those things in here and then you'd save that to the database. And whenever you load it up, you know what model you're getting. So we need to create our own model. So obviously we're just going to create a, uh, an example one here. So we're just going to go copy paste the weather forecast and we'll just call it whatever we want. So let's say we want to call it book. Okay, so we have book. And obviously you have to call it book. And then we want to actually fill in what we want the book to have. So we want a book to have a title. So you can either type public um, string title get set, which simply just means it's a property that can be, you know, you can get it and you can set it. Um, also a nice little shortcut you can do to make a property. Let's say we want also the title of the book to have an overview or a blurb, right? So you can write prop and then go tab tab. And then you say what type it is. So you want to make it a string and then you tab again. And then it's my property. So you want it to be um, overview maybe we'll call it. And then done, you've got your property here. It did the get set for you. So we want a title, an overview, and then maybe we want a price. Now for, for price right now, I'm just going to make it an integer, right? So we're going to go prop int price. Now you can actually have like a price type, but you know, for now this is fine. So we've got the title, the overview and the price. For now, we're just going to leave it like that, right? That's all our book is. It's just some data in the book. And then we also have the weather forecast service. We're going to want like a book service, right? Um, which will interact with a database. For now, it's not. It's just going to give us some fake data like this does. So let's go ahead and create that. Okay, let's create the book service by copy pasting the weather forecast service. We'll call it book service. And a service isn't really much more than just a class like normal uh, that does a task, right? It does a job. For books, it might be just loading up books from the database. It might be handling data with the books, you know, adding new books, changing parts of a book. It, it's up to you, right? So we'll call this the book service. And to be honest, we don't really need any of this. We're just going to get rid of this, uh, these summaries. For now, we're going to have one function. And what's it going to do? Well, okay, a task is um, a function that you can await. So tasks basically... Um, when you're doing web related programming compared to maybe games, if you're used to games, you don't use tasks in async. But um, if you've used coroutines in Unity, it's kind of like that. It doesn't work the exact same way, so don't get it confused. But certain things you want to do over time, like querying a database might take time. You don't want to like freeze the application. You don't want to, you want to pause the application while you get that data. You just want it to kind of happen on the side uh, as well as doing other stuff at the same time. So if we make this a task, it means that we can actually uh, wait this for it to happen. And then once it's happened, we can get the data back. So we're just going to, um, so the way they do it is they make a new web forecast and then they do this other thing. I mean, it's up to you, right? All we're going to do actually is we're going to change this to be a book array. Okay. So we can get a book array back and then we can just simply, well, we could do what they do and just fill in some random stuff, right? But um, instead, I'm going to just hard code some data, right? 
So maybe this is just going to return some books, right? Let, let's just ignore the actual querying a database and do that stuff. Just, just give them some books back. So like get books, right? And we're just going to not even put anything in, just get books. We're simply going to return and let's not even make it a task, right? Let's just make it a book array or an enumerable book, right? It, it really doesn't matter. You can make, there's so many different types you could use for this, but we'll make it an array. So let's just return a new uh, book array. Okay. And then we can just start setting the values. So we can say new book and we can say the title is equal to, you know, test book for the first one. And then we'll set the overview to be, um, I don't know, random overview. And then the price to be equal to, and it's an integer, so we can just go for 10, okay? And you can go ahead and give yourself some more books if you want, right? I'm just gonna go ahead and skip. I'm just gonna skip a bit and fill in some random data. Okay, so it's a dumb little class. It's just, uh, we call it the book service, which eventually will have a database with a table of all the books we have, and we're able to query the database. But as I said, this is just about services. So we've got a service here. Now, this data has nothing to do with a page, right? This, this data shouldn't know about the page, but the page still wants to get access to the book service to you know call get books. So how does it do that? Well, we could technically make this static and not inject it, but eventually you don't want to do that because every person using your website needs to get their own instance of your database context to be able to uh, grab from that. If they're using server side Blazor, or if they're using client side, you need to do API requests where the actual um, server itself needs to have multiple instances running at once. So, you know, otherwise multiple people couldn't use your website at the same time. So we always need a way to um, give different people an instance of the book service. Right now, we need to do that by doing this. So we can go back to our startup for our software. And you see how we have a singleton weather forecast service? We can technically do that for the book service because right now it's not querying a database, it's just a static list or whatever. But I think it's better practice to actually make um, this use the book service uh, as scoped. So a scoped basically means every time a different person requests it, we give them a different instance of it. So if we do, well, we'll leave the weather forecast service. We'll do services dot add scoped. We want the iBook service, which we haven't just, we haven't made yet. iBook service, comma, book service. Okay. So let's quickly go and make the iBook service. So we go to book service. We can uh, in here, go up above it and just make a public interface iBook service. And in here, we just need to make sure it covers all the public functions. So let's just uh, implement it here. We want to make sure it has um, a book array function, get books. Okay. And all that means is now, look back here, it'll work. iBook service, book service. When a page asks for an iBook service to be injected, will inject the book service, which is obviously what you want to do most of the time. But when it comes to doing tests for your code, if you write unit tests to, you know, test logic in your API or in your, in your pages and stuff, you actually don't want to use the real database connection. You want to mock and uh, essentially supply fake data like we're doing now, but obviously we'll end up having a real database. We want to supply fake data to anyone who wants an iBook service to test whether their function works. So by doing an interface like this, it actually allows us to do that. So it's just a good practice thing, a best practice thing. And now we just need to basically make a page, sorry, that if we put in an ID, we'll get injected the book service and then we can uh, go grab book ID, whatever. And then if it's not null, we can display it on the page, otherwise redirect them or something, right? So we'll make a quick example page to show this off. Okay, so go over to our routing example page. We'll copy paste it and we'll just call it like book page, right? Book page. And the, the route will be a uh, book ID int, okay? Uh, let's just close it and reopen it because when you copy paste files, it messes up a bit. And we'll just call this book. Actually, no, what we'll do is we'll make the HTML be the header be the actual title of the book. So to do that, we have to actually store a book, right? Obviously, we also need a navigation manager to be able to redirect. So let's go in and inject one more thing, right? We want to inject a public I book service and we'll call it the book service. Okay, make it a get set. Now, I think it's telling us we're missing the namespace or are we? The I book service. Yeah, we need to uh, be using blazer tutorial dot data. So at using blazer tutorial dot data. And now it's happy, okay? So we can access the book service. We get it injected into the page. Um, so we'll make a function and we'll just call this. Um, okay, so there is a function that is called when a page is loaded and that's what we want to use here. So if you actually go um, protected override and we get all these override functions, we want to use uh, on initialized async, but it's an override task and it has to be async. Blazor isn't perfect yet when it comes to autofilling certain things, but this will work now. Want to override this function and we need to when it starts load up um, from the book service the book we want 
based on this ID. So that means also we're going to have to store a book. So we'll have a private book. We'll just call it book. And the thing is, the page shouldn't be rendered until the book has loaded. So we should do an if around our HTML saying only load it if the book isn't null. So at if book does not equal null. And then we render some HTML. The header can be at, you have to do at to remember because we're using RC Sharp code, at book.title. Okay. Then we can have a paragraph here of at book.overview. And then we can just have another uh, at book.price, right? It doesn't really matter. And we're not really going to have a button, to be honest. We'll just have this simple page with a header and then a two paragraph things. So let's load up this book. We want to say, well, the book is going to be equal to our book service dot. And then we can get books, which returns an array. But we want to get a certain index. So we want to say, um, get the index of our ID. So ID. But obviously that can cause a problem because we can access um, a value that's out of range. So I'll show you what happens if that happens and then we can actually fix it. But because we're not using any async stuff, I actually changed my mind. We should just use uninitialized and get rid of the async and make task of void. So it's just a normal void function called uninitialized. They have that for cases where you don't want to uh, wait. The problem is what if book is null? Well, if book is now null, whoops, if book is null after we've um, tried to get it, we should basically redirect because that page doesn't exist. So we can just say return. Now, technically returning at the end is pointless, but usually you'd have stuff after this uh, to do other stuff with the book. So I'm going to put it there just so I remember for later. And we just want to redirect. So navigation manager dot navigate to. And if you just do slash, it just navigates you back to like the root of your website, essentially your homepage for the website. Okay, so just a uh, slash nothing here, but this is slash book ID. Now let's give it a go. If we just run this, let's see. Okay, so remember, I warned about a problem that will happen in a second, but we can at least test the ones that uh, don't cause a problem. So if we go to slash book slash one or slash zero, we get test book, random overview, 10. Go to book one, example book, a very interesting book, 100. Go to book two, the bestest book. But then if we go to book three, it doesn't exist. We get an error out of range. Okay, so we need to make sure that when we get this book, um, it basically doesn't give us an error. Okay, so we'll go do that right now. Okay, so to be able to fix this, we're going to need to stop using the array to access it, like using the uh, square brackets of the ID, because if it's missing, then we're not going to be able to get it. Now, when we actually end up using a database, we do this slightly differently. We don't get an array back. We usually get like an enumerable back or an iQueryable. We're not going to get into that yet. That's uh, a bit more complicated. But essentially, there's a function in this library called link, and the function is first or default, which will give you the first or default. I'll explain default in a second. We'll give you the first value. Um, that covers the certain query you put in. So if we do first or default, we then give it a, I think the, it's called a predicate or predicate. I don't know, but essentially we can check, for example, where the price is equal to five or something that would give us the first one where the price is five. What do we want to do? We want to get the first one where the ID is this. Okay. So ideally we have X dot ID is equal to ID in the page. Okay. And then this doesn't throw an error if it can't find one, it just makes it null, okay? Which is useful. X doesn't have ID. So ideally we should just go back to book and make sure it has an ID. So public int ID get set, okay? And then back in the book service, we wanna set IDs. So, but in the database, this would be set by default, right? The database would set these, but we're just gonna say one, zero, one, two, okay? So now all our books have ID zero, one, two. Uh, if we try and access one with an ID that doesn't exist, it won't work, but it won't crash either. It'll just, you know, redirect us. So x.id now exists, right? Books now have ID. So let's get the first book where the ID matches the ID we want. And if that's now null, redirect, okay? So let's go ahead and run it and I'll skip ahead and see you in a minute. Okay, so let's go to slash book slash one, uh, slash o, uh, slash two as well. Then slash three should redirect us. Uh, but we get an error, which is, oh yeah, so there's a dumb error. Basically, the first time you ever do this, you have to just go to exception settings and just say, don't break, and then close it and then press continue. You'll notice that you have been redirected. So if we try again, book four, well, book slash four, you just get redirected back to your homepage, right? It still works. So slash book slash two exists. As soon as you go to three, 
it redirects you back to your home page because it doesn't exist. You can do whatever you want there, right? It's up to you. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Obviously, it's a really simple way to show you how to have a page that even gets its uh, data injected. Now, all it cares about is that the thing injected is an iBook service, which, as far as we've said, is just something that has a book array that has to get books, right? So all we need to do in the future now is kind of change this a little bit to return some data from an actual database and now these pages can actually query the database so we're gonna have a lot of fun doing that um first of all we might just set up a an in-memory database next video i don't know uh, how long till i'll wait before we do an actual database setup using like azure or something um but yeah let me know down below what you guys want to see about websites is there anything in particular you want to know how to do just let me know and i'll get around to it so yeah if you enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe it'd mean a lot uh, but yeah thanks for watching this video i'll see you guys next time and goodbye